I was watching a little bit of the XQC and Ethan Klein debate and it was a lot to get through. It was a lot to get through, right? It was a lot to get through. I'm not going to lie. It was difficult to get through it. But the interesting thing about the SQC and Ethan Klein debate has been all the things that's happened before. Because I wasn't aware. I don't know if you guys are aware, but I wasn't aware that the reaction... I wasn't aware, number one, that XQT was a reaction channel guy. I thought he just live streamed. I guess he does do the same thing. He does probably live streaming and reactions. But obviously reactions are a thing that can kind of get you quite viral and get you quite famous. But I wasn't aware that these reaction channels, some of them, are just doing this thing where like, they'll react to somebody's amazing video that they spend a lot of time doing. They'll then copy the title of the video and sometimes use the same thumbnail and then put that up on fucking on YouTube. And sometimes if you're the biggest streamer, you end up stealing, quote unquote, the views of the person's video, especially if you do it so soon after they publish, right? Sometimes it's within the hour. But first, the, the most thing that kind of worried me, I was surprised about, was just the fact that they copy the titles and the thumbnails and just kind of download them and just put their face over them and just kind of re-upload it. I was like, fuck, man, these guys are making millions doing the fucking bare minimum. Then I thought, then obviously when XQC came on to speak to Ethan Klein, I was very taken aback by like how dumb he is not like in a bad way like not everyone's blessed with fucking intelligence and smarts and whatever it may be I'm not the smartest guy in the world but I was very surprised about how like how dumb he is comprehension wise like the way he kind of gets to the way he forms his arguments um the things he thinks about when he when he gets you know all the responses he gives when he's backed into a corner um it was just very startling to see i was like fuck dude like you're one you're meant to be one of the top dudes in this space and you're legitimately like dumb dumb and then of course one of the standout clips of the video of the fucking um interview they did i think it was like a few hours long i forgot how long it is exactly but it's on h3's channel at the moment you can check it out if you want the debate between xqc and ethan klein the really interesting thing about him was this little scene when Ethan Klein basically, you know, challenge, you know, I don't know, it's just says something to him and he just responds in a weird way. But I thought this scene kind of encapsulates just how much of a car crash that whole entire um, debate or interview was was in the end. No one really got any conclusions. No resolutions were found. It was just absolute horror show. This clip here is fucking incredible. People would rather watch me full screen cam do the fucking warm do than, watch your prime, Bro, than watch your do prime it for content. A week. Do a week of no reaction content and see how many fucking views you get. Oh, he's crying in the corner. He, oh, okay, sure. I mean, that's content, man. It's, ori it's that's, original that's content, the, at least. Like yes, it? do that, bro. Like do it. A, like that, dude, do a week. I thought you fucking week. love it, man. Bro, this is the most funny event yes, in the great. past fucking four years, bitch. It's, it's awesome. Do a People would rather... So, you saw that, right? Very, very interesting. Number one... The way that he does the worm, I've never in my life seen anybody do a worm like that. In my life. I've never seen anybody in my entire life when, when, when they say, oh, I'm going to go do the worm. Because usually it's something that you see people bust out at fucking house parties when everyone's drunk and shit. I don't think I've ever seen somebody in my entire life do a worm like that. Where he's basically splayed out on the floor, flat. Then he brings his knees like towards his chest and then kind of moves his way forward that way. Like, don't get me wrong. Anatomically, he probably looks more like a worm the way he's doing it now. But it's such a forty, strange way of doing the worm. Like, he literally has his face on the ground and his ass up. Like, he's like he's ready to get fucking drilled. It's, it's like insane the way his fucking worm, his fucking brain works. He legitimately may have worms in his actual brain. But he's able to process that information. It was pretty startling to see that this is how this guy's brain fucking works like i just i've got um i've only got used to the, his fucking voice and the way he speaks right and his accent and whatever it may be and that kind of like you know machine gun fire way that he speaks only recently and that's taken me a lot of time kind of you know i guess over time if you watch enough of his content you can kind of get what he's saying but apart from that god almighty mate like the guy is legitimately redacted, but he's also incredibly, incredibly fortunate that he's able to make a ridiculous living doing the bare minimum where he just basically reacts to people's content, doesn't actually provide much commentary. Again, that's the other thing too to say to this world that I was startled by. I didn't know this was a thing. 
these guys take pride in the fact that they don't actually add much commentary to their to their reactions sometimes you'll stand up mid commentary and go to the toilet for like 10 minutes and then come back as the video is still playing and then that'll be uploaded as a fucking thing without any other clips taken out and i was watching it thinking to myself fuck man this is now i kind of understand why people get annoyed at like some people when you know people like this you know then start arguing about hard work and about how hard they work and how hard their life is and all this malarkey when it's like the average person will probably never ever get the opportunity to make what xqc makes streaming cool that's all well and good but it's the fact that he doesn't recognize how lucky he is and isn't you know out here kind of and it's kind of out here maybe maybe shoving it in people's faces the fact that he doesn't does the bare minimum and is okay with it because at the end of the day his fans are the ones that are maybe more to blame than him because he's just providing the content and if they want to watch it they want to watch it but if they if there's an audience for it then he's obviously going to keep making it so maybe his fans should be held more to an account than him but it's just the attitude around it that's a bit startling and it's a really interesting thing dynamic wise to see them two talking because a part of me wonders is it very difficult not to be jealous of somebody like an xqc if you're ethan ethan has been involved in the culture wars cancel culture he's been involved in you know youtube drama beef in general um he's constantly putting himself and his staff on the line with his fucking crazy horrible hot takes um you know getting sponsors kind of pulling out of the show all this stuff is done because he has a point of view right because he actually has um a perspective on the world however ill-informed he might be however redacted you might think he may be he has an actual opinion right and because he has an opinion <laughs> <laughs> he's constantly kind of you know dodging you know low, fucking landmines everywhere and you know because he kind of has some level of intelligence in that regard it's kind of you know it's sort of like a bit of a prison when you're that i guess woke or aware you kind of always want to share your thoughts and you always kind of feel like you can change the world with your ideas and your fucking live streams and podcasts which is fucking ridiculous but still you feel that way but then xqc kind of knows exactly what he is he knows his niche he knows his audience he knows what he does well and he just lasers in on it now it, it's it's pretty horrible the content it's not the greatest he doesn't you know he's not the most enjoyable person to listen to with his the way his voice inflection works and whatever it may be and the content isn't that great but people love it and they lap it up so i wonder if you're an ethan klein will that make you feel jealous would that make you feel a bit of envy are you pissed off is it just the game is the game like how, how does that make people feel because having seen some of these reactionary channels out there i'm thinking to myself fucking hell i've been doing everything wrong these days mate these guys like him the sniper wolves and shit they literally just sit there and do the they don't even talk that much they might say oh my god or like you know make some faces and shit for the thumbnails but they hardly add anything to these videos and they just re-upload them it's legitimately one of the most insane things i've seen in terms of a little mi micro economy but yeah the debate itself was a fucking waste of time if you want to watch it for just the entertainment and the lows in the background it's good to watch but god almighty man it was really 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 surprising to see how dumb xqc was because i guess from my opinion i think if i was him and i did the stuff that he did i guess i'd have a couple arguments in my back pocket like a couple like even though i know what i'm doing is like technically bad i would have some reasons that i would i'd have some you know i'd have some rationale behind my decisions right i'd have some um opinions on how i think what i'm doing isn't that bad that's what i'd actually try and do but he didn't have any he didn't really have any he didn't really provide any any bit of pushback he kind of crumbled then started to go to you know insults and talking about money whatever guys especially guys I think it's probably the same with women, maybe with looks. When do start to mention money, you know they lost the argument. So he started mentioning money and shit. That already lost the plot. But it's hard as well because I do get some sympathy for XQC because with Ethan Klein, he looks like like on paper, he he's not obviously, but he looks like such a keyboard warrior, right? He looks like such a like an incelly keyboard warrior, the way he looks with a neck beard and the fact that he's fat, even though he's lost a lot of weight, he's got that look about him. It's hard if you're debating him to take him seriously as a dude because you just want to slap him right that's your instant reaction you just want to punch him in the face but unfortunately with somebody like ethan you actually need to debate him properly like you actually actually need to you know uh restrain from using any fucking crazy swear words restrain from any kind of any crazy insults and just actually attack the merits of his points or the merits of his arguments um and that way maybe you can win but i understand if you're an xqc looking across on the screen and seeing somebody like an ethan trying to sun you 
trying to basically talk down on you trying to make you look dumb and you obviously obliging and make yourself look even worse it's very difficult to kind of you know um take a deep breath and just approach it in a somewhat you know well adjusted manner whatever it may be but i thought ethan klein did a good job personally um he does usually sometimes get emotional in these debates but i thought he tore xqc apart with fucking ease <laughs> i don't think it was much of a challenge and um yeah man it got even embarrassing when healer claim came onto the stream as well that got even more embarrassing because essentially you had a complete you know contrast of streamers and personalities one guy who's kind of okay being the place being position that he's kind of in built a bit of a legacy he's obviously got a growing family working with his friends and then you got XQC there kind of on his own in this big mansion, you know, just recently divorced, um, you know, <laughs> trying to argue why him making reactionary channels, reactionary clips of people's hard work on YouTube and putting them up with the same thumbnails and titles is somehow good work. So it was a strange interview. It made me laugh. I cringed. I, I, I bathed. But in the end, the content was fucking golden. But yeah, that that worm was one of the weirdest worms I've seen in my entire life. I've never, obviously, honestly, in all the years I've been on this earth, I've never ever seen somebody do a worm like this in my life. I've never seen it. Do a week of no reaction content and see how many fucking views you get. Oh, he's crying in the corner. He, oh, okay, sure. I mean, that's content, man. It's, a ri it's <laughs> that's, original that's content, cool. at least. Like yes, it? do that, bro. Like do it. And then he grabbed, grabbed these balls. Oi, look at that. Bad boy. He grabbed these balls. Bad boy XQC. Grabbing these balls. And what people are saying in the chat, XQC taps into a way bigger international network. I think that's why he has so many. Oh, that's true. Good point. Why did I not think about this? He's so smart. I don't know why I didn't think about it. That's very true because he's, what is he? He's Canadian, right? Or whatever, right? And then I'm, I'm assuming um, because of the Canadian connection with it being French, that's probably international. But yeah, in general, that makes a lot of sense why he, why he probably taps into that. Um, they probably start off taking uh, it seriously, then they get lazy when they make. It. Yeah, for sure, Z. No, there's a aspects of it of also that I just, I just didn't know that that was that that existed. I just, for me, it's just the idea of reacting to somebody's fucking video, but then just grabbing the fucking title and using the same thumbnail, like that is fucking wild. That's not even I don't know. That wouldn't be something I'd even consider doing. Like why would I just copy the title? Why, why not rename it something else? Somebody else can find you. I don't know. It's the same thing to do. But I guess it makes sense then because whenever I have looked at things online, if you ever look for something viral, you'd always see like a list of reactionary channels first. So I guess it does work for the algorithm. So I guess they know what they're kind of doing. I don't really know what I'm doing. Um, I don't hate H3, but their community is such a virtue signaling echo chamber. It's hard not to be put off sometimes. Yeah, to be fair, the, the H3 thing. I, f I don't know maybe he's a bit spineless like I, I find him to be a bit of a spineless guy but again not his fault it kind of is what it is um personally I don't think he's the most um well-intentioned guy in the world don't get me wrong he probably does have some good traits about him but I don't know it's just never been for me really um I used to tune into H3 here and there at the beginning when they did their podcast but then after a while I just kind of got put off by it you know it's just not for me really that kind of humor their perspective on the world it's just not something that i kind of agree with in the slightest i just kind of keep it moving but there are some clips i see of him online which i'd like but if anything the, the thing that i like the best about healing the healing um I, i've mixed the fucking names together the thing i like the best about ethan is just his willingness to fucking just say what he wants to say and at the risk of le legitimately risking everybody's jobs you know what i mean because he just says some crazy shit puts everybody job in jeopardy but he doesn't care and i think the reason why he does that is because he looks after people I think behind the scenes, he actually has made some promises to people probably directly and said, hey, if I have to pay you out of my own fucking pocket, I will. Don't worry about the sponsors type of thing. So I think that is commendable that he does that, to be fair. And it makes for a fun of show because it's a roller coaster. You don't know what's going to go on. Do you know what I mean? Um, anyway, um, let's continue now. Let's go here and say this. Next thing to say. Oh, um, brother, man. Brother, 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 brother. Really, is that true? Ted, you said all these employees are over 100k salary. That's really good then. I guess I keep saying, is it true? I'm shocked because obviously, you know, LA, London, but I'm assuming 100k, it, although it's a lot, might not be a lot in LA, right? Maybe that's probably the re reason why. So maybe 100k is a good starting base because it gives everybody opportunity to kind of, you know, get some, you know, have a good quality of life. But I guess 100,000 probably isn't the same 100,000 that it'd be in the UK. Because if I was on 100,000, pounds here in the uk i'd be balling 
I'd I'd be balling. I'd have a separate studio and all sorts of stuff. Do you know what I mean? And it'll be and there'll be money left over to fucking look after a fucking uh like a Doberman <laughs> or a Chihuahua. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, let's continue. 